Hello, and welcome to West Sussex Christian Center. We're glad you're able to join us today as we gather to praise and worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We hope and pray that you'll be blessed by the message that has been prepared for you today, and that your relationship with the Lord God will be increased uh, throughout this message. Thank you and welcome. We thank God for bringing us together. Happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. <laughs> you know, I think many of us, I mean, I, I, I'm not originally American. I'm not born as American. I have come to enjoy what you are enjoying. And I have come to have to get to understand the history of USA. And today being 4th of July, it's, it's a day that many Americans are celebrating. And so I want to say happy Independence Day. Yeah, I, I myself, coming from Ghana originally, understand what it means to be colonized. I, my, my forefathers fought. Many died. Blood was, was shed to fight for our independence as Ghanaians. And the same has also happened for Americans. Many of our forefathers, many American lives were lost so that you and I will have the freedom from people. So this morning, we have every reason to honor God and thank him in times like this. Talking more about our independence, American independence, I want to invite Brother Franco. Brother Franco is a history teacher. He, he has a very good understanding of the American history. So I want to call him to come and give us a shot, a shot. This one is a crash course on the American history, okay? Thank you so much, Brother Franco. Do feel free and come and share. Thank you. He is short. It's nice to be here for a few hours. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Uh, so, yeah, Pastor called me and said, uh, you know, it's going to be July 4th uh, tomorrow. Could you say something about why the holiday, why the day is so relevant, so important? So just a kind of, a, again, a short crash course or cliff notes for those of you who went to college and remember cliff notes. Um, so yeah, so July 4th re uh, references July 4th, 1776, which essentially is an important date in American history because it is the official uh, Declaration of Independence, which was a document created by uh, Thomas Jefferson with the help of Benjamin Franklin and John Adams. And it is the first time in, in human history that a people officially declare their independence on paper, okay, they, they wrote down that they were declaring independence, they articulated the arguments based on certain principles, and they essentially uh, came together as a group of states to present it to the American people. So to understand the context of that is before, whenever countries have rebelled or had revolutions and overthrown governments, they've just either done it through violence or um, people have abdicated, or uh, it's been very chaotic, and it's been without the articulation, without the arguments, without the principles. So the Declaration of Independence, the most famous phrase, of course, is uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, as that are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, that in itself owes to God, essentially, what, what is it saying? It's saying that God has created us as human beings, as man and woman, with certain inalienable rights, God-given rights, or natural rights, as some people call them. When somebody says natural rights, it's God-given rights, because that was essentially the original meaning of that. So it is the first time, really, in history that you have people essentially saying, God created you, you have rights instilled and given to you, imbued to you by God, that no government, that no one, no king, no dictator, no ruler can take away with you. The right is given to you from birth, from, from the creation that God created us, not from a government. Okay, it's that the idea that we as people 
as citizens of the country, the government serves us rather than us serving the government. So in the context, that period in time, if you go back a few hundred years, essentially every government in the world is either a monarchy or a dictatorship, okay? So uh, in the context of human history, it's extremely important. Um, and the proof of that is that subsequent to the 1776, 120 nations have essentially used the Declaration of Independence or some form or shape of it or some quotes or some of the principles or all the principles to also declare their independence from either colonial leader, co colonial rulers, or uh, dictatorships or oppressive governments. Not only that, but many famous leaders have also used uh, the Declaration of Independence. Um, you know, Link, uh, Abraham Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, uh, Martin Luther King, of course, being one of the most famous. So it is what I like to reference a, found, a foundational document that, of course, is not perfect from its inception, okay? And what I also like to tell people and I tell my students is there were a lot of things that people, freedoms and certain groups of people that did not have those freedoms. When, when it says that all men are created equal, obviously it didn't apply to every single type of person in the country. The point is that it, is, it was the foundation, okay? And if you use the analogy of a house, a house does not become built immediately like that. There is a foundation that is laid, there's digging, there's pipes, and then slowly but surely that house is built. And we benefit today from the struggles of many groups of people, many movements that use those principles to build the house that we live in today. And that I think is unique in the world. When we say American, we didn't, are not referencing one type of person. We're not referencing men, we're me referencing women as well. We're not referencing the specific color of people or specific religion of people or creed or ethnicity. When we say American, we mean everybody. And so July 4th, to me and to most people, I think, represents a celebration of what America has become uh, because of the founding principles in the past. And, and that, you know, when you, again, when you say somebody's an American, it, it's all of us. It's all of us, no matter how we look, no matter how, um, you know, what our politics are, anything like that. So uh, that's just a little, a little something about July 4th. But a little uh, Easter egg, I guess you could say, is that the, I, my birthday was Friday. Thank you, Pastor, for the wonderful uh, song that you sang me the other day. I was born on July 2nd, 1776. So I'm what's called a bicentennial baby. Uh, excuse me, 1976. <laughs> 1976, yeah. Uh, Methuselah, you got nothing on me. <laughs> uh, yeah, 1976. Yeah, that would be a shocker. If my wife found out I was a, a few hundred years old. 1976. So I always consider July 2nd the actual Independence Day because it, it was actually signed on July 2nd. It was presented to the public on July 4th. So that became um, what is now considered the, uh, the independence of the country. So um, yes, 1976. But I, I've always felt, even though my parents were immigrants who, you know, had thick accents coming from a, a relatively poor country that had a, a history of dictatorship, I've always felt, obviously being born here, but and that particular time and that date, very American. And um, w whether you're born here or not, everybody, you know, if you if you want to partake in the the American experience, it is open to everybody. And that's pretty much it, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, I don't want to hurt your feelings, Pastor, but uh, the British, the English, King George III. Uh, but I will say this. We did have a lot of our influences from, you know, a Congress similar to Parliament. You have the House of Lords, the House of Commons, the Senate. The, you know, the government came later on. The, the Declaration of Independence is not our government. It was the, the catalyst for the creation of our Constitution, which is a whole nother lesson, a whole nother class. But yes, we, we certainly share a brotherhood, a brothership, you could say, with uh, the nation of England. Of course, today we're very close uh, uh, allies and friends, and uh, no hard feelings, I'm sure, Pastor. But uh, amen. Thank you. Oof. Man, history. You know, history is one of my favorite subjects. Um, 
I remember, and you know, see the way Brother Franco has said it so beautifully. If you do get the opportunity to study history from the British view, Americans were not nice people. <laughs> but by God's grace, it, 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 it's all seen from everybody's view. The English say it differently. Why the Americans fought for their independence? Why the Ghanaians fought for their independence? And if you study Ghanaian history from Ghana, Ghanaians also have a very cruel view of the British for why they had to fight for their independence. And I'm sure Americans also have a very cruel view of why they had to fight for their independence from the British. But the underlining tone is this. God did not cr create us to be ruled and be controlled by human beings. And so whenever you find people trying to control human beings, you get revolt. You get revolt because it's not the nature of God's intent for humans. Yeah? God did not create humans to control one another. He, he created us to lead one another, but not by force. Not by force. Even he who is God does not lead us with force. You know? And that's one thing we always have to understand about God and life and human life. We thank God. So, I, as, as we think of July 4th and the independence of the America, of USA, I'm, I'm excited and I'm praying and I'm seeking God. And this leads me to my sermon today. Today I'm speaking on the subject, freedom. 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 Sorry, children are not being dismissed today. Children are going to stay in our service today. Um, ooh, sorry about this. Children, if you need to walk around or steam off, you can go to the... You, <laughs> did, did you guys see the reaction? In, after next week, in two weeks, there will be service for our children. Our ch children's ministry is taking a break. But in two weeks, they will be back. Children, I apologize on behalf of our leadership and on behalf of all of us. I apologize. But in two weeks' time, you will have service of your own. There's actually good plans to make it more fun and interesting for you. So please do bear with us, okay? Thank you so much. Parents, if your children need to stretch up, you can go upstairs or you can go downstairs. All right. Thank you. So, like I said... I'm speaking on the subject freedom because today we remember what God has done for us as Americans in this country, how some people devoted themselves to fighting for our freedom from British colony, from the British colony. So in view of that, let's go to Revelations chapter 12. Revelations chapter 12 verses 10 to 12. Revelations 12, verse 10 to 12 says, Then I heard the apostle John giving account of what's happening in the realms of God and the heavens says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of God, of our God, and the power of his Christ have come for the, for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore, Rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil 
has come down to you, having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Amen. Shall we please pray in Jesus' name? Father, we thank you for your word. Lord God, in Jesus' name, we give you glory and we give you honor for victory you have won for us. We thank you for your word that you have spoken to us. We thank you for your guidance in your word. Holy Spirit, thank you for putting, for giving us this opportunity to know the Father's agenda concerning our life. Spirit of our living God, as we look into your word, we pray you will breathe afresh on us. Give us understanding. Give us what it takes to grasp what the Father has for us. Give us a heart that loves the Lord, that will live in accordance to the word of God. Holy Spirit, we pray you have your way in our midst. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to speak to your people. I pray you give me clarity, O oh Lord. Give me confidence and boldness to speak in love, O oh Lord. May this time be a time of encouragement, a time of empowerment, and a time of preparation for the calling and the destiny you have for all of us. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in our midst. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank God. So, as I said already, I'm speaking on the subject freedom. 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 You see, when, when you look at the word freedom, it has to begin to make you rejoice. It has to begin to make you be excited. Why? Because there is a declaration, there is a, a victory that has been won for you and I. That has been won for humankind. There is a victory that has been won for you and I. The, the, the writer of Revelations saying in verse 12, he says, Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you will dwell in them. Woe to the earth. Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Before he got to verse 10, he points to a battle that went on in the heavens where Satan and his angels fought in heaven. And, and, and one angel led the angels of heaven to fight Satan and Satan was defeated and was thrown down to earth. And he says that he says that because Satan has been thrown down to earth, has been cast from heaven, Satan is now very, very having a very great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. God, ha God has an appointed time where he's going to deal with Satan altogether. And so in this time, Satan, Satan is very angry and his wrath is towards God, but he's doing it through human beings. He's coming at you and I from all angles, making sure that he really, really creates damage and havoc and distraction and, and hurt and pain for mankind. And the bigger agenda is to hurt God. And to hurt God, he turns to God's creation. To tarnish it and to destroy it. And so because of this wrath, for centuries, for years, we all know that in the Garden of Eden, Satan comes to Adam and Eve and lies to them. And they obeys him. And since then, since then, 
Every human person is suffering. Every human being suffers. But this wouldn't go on forever. Because when you read in the verse 10, he says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. A loud voice came from heaven and this loud voice is not, is not an angel in heaven. This loud voice is according to the word of God says that the accuser of our brethren, human beings. So that person that spoke in heaven has a human nature and a human something about them. The person relates to humans as their brothers. I have no doubt that this person is Jesus Christ. Who making sure and giving his angels charge over us and his angels fighting and overcoming Satan in heaven, says, says that our accuser is dealt with. He continues to say, the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God, day and night has been cast down. You see, Satan's work of accusation only ends here. You know, what Satan is doing here, the accuser is doing here, is he's going before God and he's accusing you and I constantly before God. That God cannot do any good thing in our lives because we do not honor God. You see, Satan is very tricky, you know, very, very good. The perfect world God created without sin, he comes, he tarnishes it, and then he comes, presents something that you would see as good to you, the fruit of knowledge and of good. He, he, he gave it to Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve ate it. He pointed, he pointed it to them. Did God really say you cannot eat this? And he said, no, if you eat, you will not die. And Adam and uh, the word of God said, uh, Eve saw it and it became, suddenly became pleasant to Eve. And she ate it. She, Satan presents something that is pleasant. That would be pleasant to you and I. But dishonest God to us. Right? Brother Franco, please come. Thank you. Let's do something. Let's do something. Let's do something. I have this tissue box in my hand. Hello, Brother Franco. Happy belated birthday. Man, I am so sorry I couldn't give you anything last week and anything yesterday, you know. But I'm, I'm thankful I was able to. Uh, all, the, all the same. Oh, sorry. All the same. I have this gift for you. God says that this is not good for you, but I want to give it to you because I know you like it. What do you say? Take it from me. You like it, right? Come on, it won't harm you. Come on, it won't, it won't do anything to you. It's just a nice thing that you can have in your life. And, you know, occasionally, you know, you can do it. It's your thing that you do against God. Come on. Yeah, I want you to take it. Yes. For for demonstration's sake. Thank you. Nice. Now you can go and sit down with it. Nice. So you've got my pressures that I've given you. You remember Jesus said that the prince of this world comes, but he finds nothing of his in me. Now I, I, acting the role of Satan... I've managed to talk Brother Franco into taking this thing that I have given him. So he's having it. And so long as he has it in his hands, 
So long as he has it in his hands, what I do, when, when the saints of heaven are meeting, me too, I come. Satan, that's what he does, the accuser, comes, knocks on the doors of heaven, comes in boldly, and he begins to talk to the father concerning Brother Franco. Why do you love this guy? He takes things that I give him. He's, he's, he, as a matter of fact, look at him. He's holding the tissue box in his hand. The tissue box that you said nobody should take. So why are you giving food to him? Why are you blessing him? Why are you giving him power to speak against me in the midst of believers? Why are you giving him authority over demons, over my, my army? And so he succeeds in accusing you and I constantly. But what God has done, which calls for you and I to celebrate, is that he has been cast down from heaven. He cannot accuse you and I anymore. Even if he tries, he will not be successful. Because God has put in place a final blow against his accusations. When you read Hebrews, Hebrews 7 verse 25 says, Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he also lives to make intercession for them. Hallelujah. He lives to make intercession for them. Hebrews 7.25 mentions intercessor. Intercessor. You see, the, 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 the Hebrew word paga means to fail or to attack, but also me, me, meets or make supplication. So he makes supplication for us. Again, when you look at the same word in Greek, it means petition. It means petition or intercessor. Jesus is making intercession for you and I. You see, our English word intercession is derived even from Latin, to come between. It means to come between two entities. Two entities and normally one having the power to subdue the other. And so Jesus has become our intercessor. Means that he has become the person in between you and God. I and God. And so when Satan goes to begin to accuse, Jesus is also there in heaven. <laughs> no, Lord God. Remember what I did for this guy. <laughs> so really, God has the authority to destroy you and I, but because of Jesus, who is our intercessor, who is making petition for you and I, God does not destroy us. God does not. You see, Christian stand, Christ stands between us and the Father. That is why we pray in Jesus' name. Because it is by his sacrifice that we are made righteous and can approach the throne of God. Hallelujah. By the blood. By the blood. Jesus has died for you and I. Jesus. Another verse that I want us to look at is 1 John 2 verse 1. He says, My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Hallelujah. We have an advocate. We have an advocate. You see, Webster Dictionary defines advocate as one who pleads the cause of another. 
specifically one who pleads the cause the case of another person at in tra, in a tribunal court or a a, a judicial a, a judicial court a counselor a counselor but when you look at smith bible dictionary the word is derived from paraclete one that pleads the cause of another used by jesus jesus used it to describe the person of the holy spirit when you look at john chapter 14 verse 14 also john chapter 15 verse 25 and also john chapter 16 verse 7 it describes the office and the work of the holy spirit the advocate the advocate but you see in looking at it in this context in the passage that we are looking at jesus himself is our advocate and the word advocate as john is using it to the jews it, it begins to make sense this way the 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 advocate used to be the person that because jews were being colonized by the roman empire when they offended rome they they appeared before roman court and they did not the jews did not understand the roman law and so they would hire someone who would go with them like a judge like like a like a lawyer who who, who knows the 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 roman law to in, to 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 fight their case for them in court and that is the role that lawyers play these days you you uh, you are uh, employ a lawyer when you have a case in court because they understand the constitution they understand the laws and all that and they argue your case for you jesus being used here in this passage in first john 2 verse 1 is our advocate he stands in the position because he understands the laws and the founding laws of human life he knows god more than all of us and he knows how to appeal to god more than any of us and so jesus being our advocate him living says that he will send another advocate he will send another helper the holy spirit also does the same work in our life and that is also why the word of god says that it is not by might nor by power but by the spirit it is the work of the holy spirit through jesus christ that we can ever appear before god that we can ever do anything for god that we can ever be set free from any accusation of the enemy jesus knows how to appeal on our behalf you know, even you, I don't know how to appeal on my behalf. If I stood before God and tried to argue my case with God, by the time I should say, God, that alone should cause me to be condemned. Do you know that the Jews respect the word Yahweh to the extent that they would never say the word Yahweh. That's why you have Jehovah. To mention the word Yahweh, they would use a, a lesser word to mention it because Yahweh is a, a big word that they would not even pronounce with their mouth. So can you imagine me appearing in the courts of heaven in my human limitations trying to argue a case before God? But by God's grace and mercy in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we can stand boldly in heaven's cause and stand and uh, and ask for pleading and mercy for forgiveness for everything God would do in our life. Do you know that um, when you read um, a book, 40 Days with the Holy Spirit by R.T. Kendall, very successful man that moved in the spirit realms and he writes, a, he, he shares a devotion of how one time he was in his car driving and for some reason he just felt the power of God all over the room, all, all over his car. He couldn't drive the car. He was so overwhelmed with the power of God. And God just opened his eyes. The Spirit of God opened his eyes. And he saw Jesus speaking to the Father. And Jesus saying, Father, it is time. 
he is my brother, you can give it to him. A short case that went on in heaven. It is time you can give it to him. And he had always been praying that he would be able to see in the supernatural, in the supernatural realm. And at that moment, his eyes were open, spiritual eyes were open, and he was able to hear and see Jesus making intercession that it was time for him to be trusted with that gift from God. Wow! Jesus makes intercession for you and I. Everything you are enjoying on this earth, everything you are doing, every life you are living is because of Jesus Christ. Because you and I, we have already been condemned. We would have been condemned a long time ago if it had not been Jesus. If it had not been Jesus. And so the writer says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. You see, this raises three things, three ways in which we have overcome the accuser. In which we have overcome the wrath of Satan. In which we have overcome Satan and his plots and his agenda against our life. His agenda, the first one, he says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. You see, the blood overcomes Satan's accusation. Every time we have to be judged, Jesus reminds the father of his blood that has paid our debt already. Hallelujah. Jesus reminds the father. We may be even worse than Satan's accusations but we are still made righteous by the work of Jesus on the Calvary cross. How do you see Jesus? And so when you look at Ephesians 1.7, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood for forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. By the blood we can be forgiven. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus has paid the debt that was supposed to be on you and I. His blood gives us freedom. And again, another thing to pay attention to, Hebrews 9 verse 14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Cleansing your conscience from dead works to, se to, to, se to serve the living God. Hallelujah. It is because of the blood we can be cleansed and be purified in order that we can serve God. You see, other than that, all we will see ourselves doing is referring to the sin that Satan has proudly presented to us and we have proudly accepted from him. Every time you have to serve God, you will say, I am not worthy because I watch pornography. Every time you have to serve God, you will say, I am not worthy to serve God. I am not worthy of coming before him. Guilt will be your portion because of sin. But by the blood of our Lord Jesus, we are able to be cleansed. Our thoughts are cleansed. Our hearts are purified. We are washed so that we can stand in the presence of God. And say, yes, Lord, I come to serve you regardless of my sin. I want to honor you. Glory to God. And so are you here living in guilt and shame and condemnation? The blood of Jesus cleanses you. The blood of Jesus purges you. Believe, trust, ask for God for forgiveness and desire and intent never to go back to that sin. You remember Jesus and the woman who was being accused of adultery. After Jesus had defended him by right, defended her by writing on the on the ground, and everybody that had a stone leaving her, Jesus asked her, "Woman, where are your accusers?" And she, they are no more. Said. 
go. Neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. We should go and sin no more. We shouldn't make sin be our portion because we have been set free in Jesus Christ. Sin has no control over us. Satan has no accusation before the Father against us except we allow him. We have freedom to worship. We have freedom to honor. We have freedom to praise God. Hallelujah. But he says that we overcame him by the blood. And so by the blood, we have overcome Satan. And the second point here is this. By the word of their testimony. By their testimony. This deals with Satan's deception. You, remember, you see how I tried to manipulate Brother Franco to take the box from me? The sin from me? He manipulates us and then he accuses us. He deceives us. He deceives human nature. There are so many walking in this world who are deceived. There are many Christians who Satan manages to deceive. Knowing and remembering the work of God in a believer's life protects them against Satan's deception. Ha! Ha! That is where Human, the Christian is dangerous to Satan. Knowing Jesus, knowing the work of Jesus, knowing God through Jesus, knowing the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, knowing who you are, identity, your identity in God, knowing who God is and knowing who he is and what he's done in your life is enough to overcome all his deception. And so every time he presents something to you, you're like, sorry, Satan, you're a liar. This one is a lie. Now we can literally stand before Satan and say, you're a liar. This is not true. We cannot be manipulated anymore. We can say, no, look, even, look, even if you sin, you choose to sin. It's not because you did not know it was a sin. You decided, you chose it to sin. Satan couldn't in this day, Satan cannot manipulate you anymore as a child of God. What did God say? I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. I will pour my spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. The Holy Spirit dwells with you. And so whenever you sin, it is not that, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I didn't know. You knew and you chose to do it. Satan did not lie to you. You chose to do it. That's why the Apostle Paul says that we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. We are not ignorant anymore. We now we can taste God. We know who God is. We know what he's doing in our life. That is why the child of God of today cannot sit idle not doing anything. Pick up the Bible. Pick up the Bible. Read the Bible. You see, as faithful witnesses, we have a testimony to bear. And because we know that we have been we, we know what we have seen and heard and experienced from God. We cannot be deceived by Satan's lies telling us it isn't true. Do you remember the story of the, your, the blind man that was born blind? When Jesus healed him and, and the high priest and the Pharisees, they said, hey, this is a lie. And he was standing in front of them, the high priest. His parents being afraid to defend Jesus, they asked him. And look at what he says. John chapter 9 verse 25. He opens his mouth and he answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, or not I do not know. One thing I know, though I was blind, now I I see what we know about Jesus. The things that he has done in this COVID season. Everything he has done. The people dying and you not dying. Being alive here. Everything you are experiencing. 
whether you have joy or don't have joy, the fact that you are alive and everything you see in the word, everything you believe, every prayer you pray that come to pass, that testimony you have is enough to demolish Satan. It's enough to demolish him. And so in this, in, in, in this um, July 4th, maybe starting today, you are going to be among friends and family this is the time to share the testimony. We have overcome Satan. When the unbelievers are going on about how our world is in turmoil and poverty and all that and singing all the bad news in our world, you two begin to give glory on and honor to God. Begin to say the good things that God has done. Begin to witness, testify of this good God. Rejoice and testify. 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 Unbelievers will do all their unbelieving thing. But you, you have a testimony to share. Don't shy away from it. God has been good to me. God has been good to my family. God has provided for me. I know I got COVID and I prayed and God healed me. Share that with people. When you begin to share these things, it diffuses Satan's lies that he's telling even unbelievers. It diffuses. And the last thing is this. They, not, they did not love their lives to the death. You find, our, you, you, you find our life, we find our life by losing it for Jesus. Mark 8.35 tells us. This also deals with Satan's violence. Say, do you remember the passage you read? He's so angry and he's coming with force at us. He's revenging against God through us. Touching God where it matters the most. God says that we are the apple of his eye. God says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God places a high price on human beings because he created us. And he knows God loves us. Satan knows God loves human souls. It is never God's will and desire that any of us should perish. God cares for us. And so Satan wants to hit God where it most hurts. You and I. He's coming at us with his violence, with his attacks, with his intimidations, with his roaring like a lion. Roar, but no power. Jesus has dealt with him. Jesus has dealt with him. And so in this freedom that you have, you have to exercise your freedom. You have to walk in your freedom. Walk in the freedom that Jesus has given you. Which is what? That you will not love your life more than your, yourself. You will not love your life even to death. You will not love your life. Even to death. Even to death. You know, the, the word that has been used here, love, is agape. It's the Greek word for love, agape, which speaks of a self-sacrificing a, a self -sacrificing de decision based on love. I love God so much, I would die for Jesus. I love Jesus so much, I will die for Jesus. A child of God that brings himself, that gets to that place, ah, overcomes the Satan. It's walking in the victory that Jesus has won. You see, Jesus did not love his life. He laid it down. And by God's grace, on the third day, he rose again. And if you and I love Jesus, if you and I walk in Jesus, we have to be willing to lay down our life for Jesus. For Jesus, Satan wins the battle over you if you love anything else than death in Jesus Christ. So you need to begin to ask yourself, why don't, why don't I like to tell people I know Jesus? <laughs> Why, why, why do I have a problem with telling my work colleagues I'm a Christian? What is it that causes me not want to share the gospel with other be believers? 
What is it in me that, why do I keep quiet and allow people to undermine and disrespect God? Is it because of what people will think of you? Is it because of what people will say of you? Is it because of the accusations that will come at you? Satan is already attacking you whether you like it or not. You have been engrouped somehow into this battle whether you like it or not because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You are an offender to Satan. So accept your position as an offender and be ready to die for Jesus. You have freedom. Freedom. Many died for Jesus. The apostles, having accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, having been baptized in the Holy Ghost, walking on the surface of this earth with, in power and authority, look at the miracles that they performed. Look at the things that they did. They still laid down their life. They died in Jesus. They died some of the most gruesome deaths. Oh, and the apostle Paul says, that, oh, oh, Lord, to live, to die, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. To live is Christ, and to die is gain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a question for you. Will you love your life to the death for Jesus? I have another question for you. Will your physical life be the most precious thing to you or not? Does it matter to you what people think about your relationship with Jesus? You see, the child of God today must choose, must decide who we want to be. It says that they did not love their life to the death. You have to make up that mind. Walk in this freedom. Tell Satan, bring your best on. Bring your best on. What, what else are you bringing? What else are you bringing? You see, many people think that when, when it comes to push and shove, a lot of people will give up on Jesus. I know some people will give up on Jesus. But majority will stand for what is right, I'm telling you. You see, our forefathers stood and they fought for independence because they believed it was not right. You see, the child of God that begins to know Jesus and begins to understand the freedom of Jesus goes beyond dying for their nation, I'm telling you. You would die at every cause for Jesus. People died for their nations, for independence, for their children, children, children's sake. They fought and shed their blood for, the, for, your, for your generation's sake, 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 live and die for Jesus. Live and die for Jesus. And so when you read Mark chapter 8 verse 35, it says, whoever desires to, to, to save his life will, not, will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, and the gospel will save it. Hallelujah. Jesus speaking. Again, Jesus says in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Then he said to them, Oh, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. He doesn't say every week or every month or seven years time. No. Daily. On a daily basis. And follow Jesus. On a daily basis. Brother and sister, this is freedom. The kingdom freedom is not the kind of freedom we talk about in our modern day. The kingdom freedom is by three things. By three things. By three things. By the word of our testimony, which is the second one. By the blood of the lamb. And the third one. By not loving their lives. 
do you love anything more than Jesus? Do you love your life more than? That's why you must die to selfishness. Don't be selfish in any way. Don't, when you have to do anything for God, don't count yourself. W what's going to happen if I love this sister? What's going to happen if I, now we, we, we are going to start very soon on the 7th of, on the 7th of July, or sorry, on the 7th of August, we have our back to school town drive. And now we are going to begin raising funds. We want, to sh we want to show the, young, the families of our community that are struggling that Jesus loves them. And we want to be able to be a blessing to our children in our community that Jesus cares for them. Are you going to be willing to lay down your lunch for a week so that you can, you can help support this initiative? Out of love for Jesus? Or you're going to say, oh, if I, give my, if I give my lunch, my $100 lunch plan, then how, wh what's going to happen to me? It's always me, 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 me. It's time to give up yourself and begin to think of your relationship with God. Wherever it is not right, you can make it right. Jesus is before the Father making intercession for you and I. And by the blood of our Lord Jesus, we are victorious. You have testimony. Share the testimony. And don't love your life. Don't love your life. You must be willing to lose it for Jesus. God bless you. Have a blessed 4th of July. Have a blessed weekend. Have a blessed Monday. A day off of going to work and reflect on Jesus and show other people your love for Jesus. God bless you.